Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video, it's back on the Velocity 1. Firmware 1.3.0 is out for the Velocity 1 with PC Microsoft Flight Simulator. There is a firmware out for the Xbox as well, but you've got to wait for Sim Update 10, which is coming at a later date to really take full advantage of that. But let's concentrate on this firmware for the PC for the moment. What new features does it bring to the Velocity 1 and the SIP panel? I'll be showing you that in this video. So I'm going to let that firmware continue to update there and I'll bring you back later. So let's not hesitate. Let's get on with this video. Okay, so perhaps I should have started right at the beginning, but I've done another video on the SIP Connect, how to update the status indicator panel. I'll link that in the top right for you. Go and look at that. That goes through that more thor thoroughly. I didn't actually have the Turtle Beach Control Center on this device because I already had my SIP, the actual Velocity one, updated on my desktop PC. So on my laptop, all I needed was SIP 1.2 as it was already updated to that. So I didn't have the Control Center. I had to Google it. I'll link this down in the description. Let's say get it from Microsoft. You click that, a new window open, get it in the App Store. You're likely going to have the App Store. Which one is it? I believe it's that one there. Already installed on your PC. If you have Windows 10, 11, it will just click it and it will get it free for you. Now, once you've done that, I'll actually link this page down below for you too. Velocity One Universal Control System Firmware 1.3. For more information regarding the the update to the status indicator panel click here do do that click on there it will open up once again in a new window keep up chaps <laughs> please note this version is for windows 10 11 pcs only the sip connect you have to download for your pc users this time the sip connect 1.3 utility it's a new sip connect available here you click on that you download it it will come in the form of a compressed file as they always do unzip that i've renamed it to sip 1.3 to a new folder and i've just got it in this part of my hard drive it's just easier for me to find wherever it's easier for you unzip it there if you go into that folder you've got the status indicator panel i think i've got it open so i want to close it and do it fresh for you status in the Cater panel connect that's the application you've also got a configuration guide there which is interesting let's just open because this is quite flashy now status indicator panel connect double click that give it a second look at that you get a new flashy icon come up I thought my PC was being invaded when that first happened, but that comes up and as usual the SIP connect will go into your taskbar down here there's a new thing with this. If you double click the icon, this comes up. I'll talk about that more in a moment. Generally, it's the same. Right click, select the sim or game. If it's uh, Elite Dangerous, you'd be playing or X Plane 11. X Plane 12 is there as well. Quite interesting. Hey, it's on its way. In our case, it's Microsoft Flight Simulator. I might as well prep that now. It doesn't matter, even though I don't have Flight Sim uh, open at the moment. But there you go, Microsoft Flight Simulator selected. I'm not going to start it yet because I've not started the sim. The configuration guide, though, let's open that. I've got it open already in this window. So when you click that file, this will open up in your Internet Explorer. Let's go back to the top there. It's a quick start guide, usual things. But let's get to the interesting points. When you first run SIP Connect, it may come up that Windows has protected your PC. It did in my case. There should be a little thing here, little wording, more info. Click on that. Don't click on don't run. More info and run anyway. And once you've done that, you shouldn't have to do that again. Just be aware of that. 
read through the configuration guide if you're unsure. And then it tells you, like the old SIP Connect, select your software, Microsoft Flight Simulator in our case. We'll start it later. Couple of things that are interesting here though. There's new colors, I'll be showing you this later. There's actually new colors now with the SIP panel, not just green, white, and yellow. You've got red in there as well. And yeah, it does look quite snazzy. And it tells you about X-Plane 11 there, and goodness knows what, and the Elite Dangerous will bypass that. And it's a configuration guide that's interesting. Let's just open that panel again, open our desktop icons again. Double click the SIP status indicator panel connects there software so the new icon that's come up did that not double click oh it did and this window will open and essentially i mean read through the configuration guide if you want to go step by step by that with that but essentially you've got your usual layout parking brakes landing gears now the sit panel does come with added uh sort of uh, sticky things that you can put over your status indicator panel so you can configure it to the way you want i'll just show you a picture of them in on screen but essentially if you wanted your parking brake where your landing gear is all you need to do here is drag the parking brake over here led drag it left click and hold and drag it over to where you want your land uh, pa parking brake indicator to be i'll put it on landing gear so I've got two parking brakes now, but the landing gear, I'll switch over to where the parking brake was. So now, as I'll show you later on the unit, I've not stuck those little sticky labels to my sit panel. But if I wanted to, I could stick now parking brake on this side and landing gear on this side. And you can change the whole lot. So if you don't like the current, the default layout, you can change them around. If you want to go back to the way it was, just reset the profile. But I want my parking brake, and I want to show you this later, on this side. And I want my landing gear on this side. I'm going to save that profile. You have to give the profile a name, so test... Oh, Test 1. I did save one before, which I called test, so I better save this as test 1. Test 1. So you have to give it a profile name and a file name. And it's going to save it in that location. I could say... Can I change that? No, you can't seem to change the location of where it's saving. So it'll save it users and your username. See users your username. Just keep an eye on that. Confirm. That's now saved. So let's reset that profile so it's back to the default profile. We can load the profile we've just saved. So it's my computer, C drive. Go down to users and James. And like I said, I saved one called test before. But the one I've just created was called test one. Let's open that. And there you go. Parking brake is on this side. And landing gear is on this side. Now I can keep that open. It doesn't really matter. Read through the rest of the configuration guide at your own leisure. It's actually some quite interesting stuff with this stuff with this new SIP update. What we'll do now, we'll launch the SIM and I'll show you the status indicator panel changes in action. Okay, so let's show you this new SIP update in action. Now, I've not got it active yet. Actually, something, I'm, I'm on runway 27 at London City Airport. Let me just switch you back to that manual that came with SIP 1.3. It says there, select the de desired software, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. You can do that without it started. And press start. It doesn't say start the SIM. Now, I've done this before starting the SIM. I press start there. And these remain blank nothing would happen so the sit panel wouldn't work properly i don't know if that's the way it's meant to be but if you click start so go to this icon down here and right click and start before the sim is started this does not work so just be aware of that load your sim up first and then press start something else i want to show you here in the manual the chronometer now, read through that at your own pace. I'll actually show you what this does on the Velocity one itself. Now, if you go down to settings and just press the tick icon there and go down to, we'll, go, we'll keep going down just to keep it all 
parallel, shall we say, and go to chronometer, tick in there. You've got two options here now, this is new, you've got auto and manual. Manual just behaves like the chronometer as always has, where you click into it, oh. you would click into it, let's try that again. And then you can start this manually, like a little stopwatch here, so you can see that ticking up. Click that tick again, it will pause it, press that button, the return button, it will reset it. Let's return, let's go back to settings. Oh, having fun, so let's go to settings. And let's go, let's use the up to get there quicker this time, to chronometer. And put it on auto. Go back, go up to chronometer. You've got this now. Now the manual said it will automatically detect when your aircraft takes off. I've not found that and I'm not sure that the SIP functionality is working as intended. Because like I said, like I mentioned before, this doesn't work if you press start prior to starting to sim. The SIP panel status and the kind of indicator panel does not light up on the actual uh, velocity one. I have to... Let's get a bit closer there for you. I'll start there now. Now, you can see that all went blank. It did go blank. Remember now, my landing gear icon there. It's a bit bright, so I do apologise. But that is now my parking brake, and that's my landing gear. Landing gear will stay lit, even though it says parking brake there. Remember, I switched those in a profile. So if I press the parking brake button, you see the parking brake will go off. Where it's got landing gears because I switched that around in that profile. Use those sticky labels if you need to rename them and you want to reorganize that. Unfortunately, the chronometer has started. It's actually taken off from my last session. I don't believe this chronometer is working as intended. So just keep that in mind. Turtle Beach, if you see this video, maybe you can give me a few hints and tips. Or other people, you may have figured this out. I can't get it to work. When I take off, as soon as I press start with the icon, which I showed you before, the chronometer starts ticking. But not to worry. Hopefully that will be fixed or amended in the future. One thing I do want to do here is go to my, because I want to show you a couple of changes with the status indicator panel. Go here, and I'm going to put my fuel dangerously low. Oh, well, so low that the master caution has kicked in, the master warning has kicked in, and the fuel low. Let's just put that up a little bit. I think I overdid it there. You can say that again. There you go, just put it there. And just control and E. So I've got some fuel in there. Now the master caution, or master warning has gone out, Fuel low has come on. I want to get it, get this exact for you because it does give you some interesting changes. Let's just put it there. Yeah, you see. Master caution come on, fuel low has come on, but if I move that down, I do apologise for switching you backwards and forwards. Now you can see the fuel low has actually gone red, so it's actually really warning you, and it's flashing. Isn't that neat? That's a new thing. So not only can you customise all these different layouts here to the way you want it, you've got these new colours coming in, and when it gets really dangerously low, you start to get that flashing. So there you go, the couple of issues with the chronometer that I found, and you can't start well, I found at least, if others have found different, please let me know. You can't start the SIP Connect without the SIM running. Otherwise, you won't get these lights up and it won't work properly. But look at that. That is absolutely brilliant. I'm loving this new SIP update. I think there's a couple of hot patches to come to get it working as intended. So far, so good. Now I'm going to mess around with all the different stickers. Maybe I kind of like the... I'm used to the default layout there. But maybe I will do in a future video. Put some new templates on there. Just to show you how versatile this is. Now I've heard in the forums... Uh, 
doesn't matter if it loses fuel all together, I'm not going for a flight. So I'll switch, because I plugged my Velocity 1 in. You can see, now, you can go and join the forums, I'll put a link down below, and on Controller Settings channel, I thought Sim Update was releasing later this week, and Bob there, Dr. Oculari, has linked the actual one of the forums, Flight Sim Forums, saying that it's been delayed. So this, unfortunately, Xbox users, you're not going to see for a further couple of weeks. But be excited, what you're seeing here, and hopefully all that chronometer nonsense will be fixed, is what you should be getting with the Xbox. Maybe this is not going to be working properly until Sim Update 10, so that chronometer and, you know, one or two little things there may not be properly working until Sim Update 10. But I do like the changes we have. And there's more functionality, as I just showed you there, coming in with this front display unit. Anyway, chaps, do let me know your thoughts on this. Get excited, Xbox users. It's on its way. I should be with you soon. PC users, you can try this now. You can try this out with the uh, Flight Simulator Beta program. Sign up for Beta if you're on Xbox. And you can try it out there. I do believe from one of the Discord members that this is working with the Flight Sim Beta. Do let me know your thoughts on this video, give it a like if you've enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon.